right, sons, everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. May 4th has basically become the official holiday for Star Wars, but here at Disneyland Resort, it's become the whole month of May is to celebrate Star Wars. So they have some new food, some new merch, but most importantly, in Batu, we have the biggest update of Galaxy's Edge since the land opened with new merch, including new droids, new lightsabers, There's new collectibles. There's so much stuff, you guys. This is gonna be a long one, so buckle in. New food. Get ready. Come with us Let's go. on this adventure. Let's go. <laughs> Before we get to the park, I want to check out what's going on at the Star Wars Trading Post. Right in front of the Trading Post is an impressive, gigantic sand sculpture promoting the upcoming Disney Plus TV series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I don't know how they build these. It is a much bigger to see in person than it is when you're watching this video. And one thing I hadn't noticed on the marketing until seeing the sand sculpture is the eye in the Obi-Wan Kenobi logo is actually Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber. Which begs the question, when are we going to get Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber as a legacy saber? They just announced a Hasbro Black Series one. And those are usually, like, very good. But I kind of like using the blades from the Galaxy's Edge sabers. Another new addition to the trading post is they have one of these merchandise stalls. They Kind of like the ones you see outside of Rise of the Resistance and the Resistance Outpost. Inside the trading post, there isn't a whole lot new. It's all the same merchandise you can find in Galaxy's Edge. But one thing I wanted to show you is this new build your own lightsaber display. This is like the, not the Savies, but like the plastic pieces that you can put together and build your own saber with. Outside, they have a bunch of the new merch that was released on May the 4th, featuring the classic Kenner action figures. My favorite of which is this new Spear jersey that features the classic Star Wars logo. The Star Wars 45 year patch. The sleeve says vintage action figures, but the back is the best part and that's why I want it. It says collect them all. It features the vintage originals. They're all like puffy. It's not just printed on there, it's like 3D. They also have a hat in the same style. And I also really like this water bottle that features the classic vintage action figures. A lot of people have been sending me this Rebel Leader bucket hat. And they also have the matching spear jersey. Kind of has like some island vibes to it. And over at the Lego store, they've constructed a huge Yoda. And it's actually made out of actual Lego pieces. I thought it was going to be those big Lego bricks, but no. This thing is legit and it is awesome. The Grand Californian Hotel has a gigantic Millennium Falcon and Batu cake sculpture that looks so good. I wish I could eat it. And it's made, it'd probably give me diabetes because look at all these ingredients. <laughs> At Marceline's Confectionery and at the Candy Palace inside of Disneyland, the Grogu apples are back in stock. We got this a few months ago and they are just as tasty as they are cute. The problem is you feel bad eating them. You do, but they taste so good that it doesn't <laughs> it in the end it, you don't. And with all that out of the way, let's go to Disneyland. Over at Galactic Grill, they have a new Star Wars themed parfait. This one is called the Parfait of Mustafar. It's a chocolate lava cake, chocolate ganache, red pate, a croque, not sure what that is, filled with salted caramel pudding and a red colored white chocolate mousse. I think the real star of the show here is obviously how it looks. Like this legit looks like a piece of Mustafar. Looks like there's lava underneath there and then like the crusty hard top. I thought this was going to be really chocolatey, but surprisingly the dominant flavor is that salted caramel pudding, but there is a lot going on in there. It is very, very tasty. I don't know, I'm not the biggest like parfait person just because the consistency is a little strange for me. This is a fun, evil treat that you know Darth Vader would be proud of. We'd like to thank Amaze for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Amaze gives you the opportunity to win a life-changing experience for an amazing cause. This time, Amaze is giving away your chance to live out your van life dreams with a Mercedes-Benz 404 Sprinter van with an $80,000 Vansmith conversion. This van has a fully converted interior and your choice of exterior upgrades like a bike rack and all-terrain tires for heading off-road. 
Best of all, the Sprinter van is sustainable. It has rooftop solar panels to power everything from the fridge to the interior lights. In the best part, this supports a good charity. The Mike Rowe Works Foundation is on a mission to close the skills gap by challenging the stigmas that discourage people from pursuing the millions of available jobs. Your donations will help support their Work Ethic Scholarship Program, which awards future tradespeople who work smart and hard. To enter the sweepstakes and support a great cause, go to omaze.com slash ordinary adventures now back to our video next up we're going to head over to star wars galaxy's edge because as i said there's a ton of new updates and we want to check it all out since the last time we did a galaxy's edge update the characters now are walking around again before they're kind of up and at a distance so i'm making it my goal today if we see kylo i want to ask him for a hug so you know how like all the disney characters are like hugs are back Go hug Mickey, go hug Winnie the Pooh. I'm gonna ask Kylo and see what he says. My big goal today is to find Chewbacca and get a big Wookiee hug, because yeah. I haven't gotten one in a few years now, Yeah. and I, I, I'm craving it. I know, Chewbacca gives the best hugs, but I bet you Kylo's are even better. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Kylo, Kylo, she has a question for you. Can I have a hug? Do you do hugs? I don't answer to you. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to hug. Have you seen supporters of the resistance here? Actually, yeah. If you just oh, keep no. going this way... It would yeah. seem they know more than you do. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we will find out what they know, sir. Okay. If they know something you don't, yeah. make them tell yes, sir. you. Understood, sir. They're, you they're, waste they're my time. <laughs> we are sorry, sir. <laughs> We're sorry, sir. For the order. <laughs> Your skills would be of value to us. There is a place for you in the First Order. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. You're welcome, guys. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> the resistance base is just down that way. I will. Thank you very much. Right over there. Okay, so confirmed he doesn't give hugs. But he did see a lot of faith in me for the First Order, so, you know. Not too shabby. I'll take I mean, it. I, I do sense the dark side in, in you. That was like the closest I've ever gotten to him. He's like legit, like intimidating. Like I, <laughs> I like felt a little like, oh, okay. That was cool. <laughs> First up, we're going to head into Droid Depot to see what is new in Mubo's droid shop. Starting with this action figures. Well, this is the action figures that they've had since Galaxy's Edge has been open, which features Rex, C-3PO, R2-D2, and BB-8. And now they have a new set of droid figures. Look who is in there. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh my god, look how little he is. Yeah, he's a tiny little guy. We have Babu Frick, a battle droid, a pit droid, CB-23. From and, Star Wars Resistance. Yeah, and then K-7R1. Looks kind of like K2SO. Oh, that might be the K droid that is in the case right next to the droid building. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I would buy this just just to have Babu in my... Babu, Babu, I always say it wrong, in my collection. As you know, in Droid Depot, you can build your own droid. But I, I think one thing that they weren't expecting is there's just been this whole community that's popped up about building droids, painting your own droids. And they've, they've kind of come out with a line of merchandise around that, which is kind of cool. And first up is this Droid Builder hat. I like this a lot because this is embroidered on there. It just feels like really good quality. And I think it's so hilarious that there's like this little compartment. Like, you put, the... you put like batteries in there or like droid parts or... Oh, maybe the droid chips. Oh, the droid chips? Yeah, you're yeah. right. And then it has the Droid Depot logo on there. Oh, this is really fun. I kind of want it just... <laughs> <laughs> just because of this. Just have a pocket on your hand. Oh my god, you know what you could put in there? What? Babu. Babu. From the set. <laughs> it would fit perfectly in there. He would. <laughs> Some other merch in the Droid Builders collection is this orange t-shirt. And it again has a weird little pocket. Actually, two little pockets. I don't know what you're going to store in there. And it has the Droid De uh, Depot logo on the shoulder. And if you're in colder climates like Hawk, then we got this sweatshirt for you. Has Droid Builders logo there, and it has also the Droid Depot logo. I like it. And if you're one of those droids who likes to drink your oil in the morning, they got you covered. This Droid Builders R Series Astromech Cup. 
What is that thing right there? I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it comes out and I'm guessing you use it to stir your oil. In my day, this was called a fanny pack. But the kids these days, they wear it as like a, a cross body strap thing. Yeah. I would go old school and wear it around my waist. And this is where you carry all your droid parts. Oh, look, oh! there's Mubo. Oh my God, wow, that's so cool. That's the proprietor of the Droid Depot. Yeah, That's. is there any other merch with him on there? I don't think so. That's awesome. And if you have a younger droid builder in your family, and then you got this, what is this, a tank top? Yeah. I guess. You could like hang something from there. You could get like one of the keychains or something and hang it from there. Of course, you gotta have a pocket. You gotta have a couple pockets because you gotta keep all your personality chips. And then over here they have a more uh, traditional t-shirt. Yeah, and it just has all the, the domes on there. I love the sleeves on this one. Why don't they make this for adults? Oh my God. <laughs> they thought of everything. They have a freaking Babu Frick magnet. This okay, I think we need that. I was suggesting that you could put one of these astromech personality chips in that hat pocket. These change the sound of your Build-A-Droid, and they've actually retired the black chip, and they've come out with four new colored chips. They come in a, a smaller package, in, which yeah. is kind of cool, so you can fit more of them in the wall. Yeah, they, unfortunately they don't have any on display right now. Yeah, you can't tell what they sound like. But we were just talking to one of the, the workers here and they said that one of them sounds kind of like Chopper. So, I like that. They've also come out with a new accessory for your R-Unit droids. So this replaces the back panel of your droid and it has this magnetic oh. attachment that can grab onto things. So like, let's see. Yeah, that, sh that demonstrates what it does. Now you could actually put this in the middle of the floor and have your R units go around and see who can grab onto the storage crate first. So it's like a new kind of like functional game you can play with your R units. You know what I just realized in this very moment? I'm actually part droid now because of my leg. I had to get surgery. Well, you're a mod. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. I'm a mod, so like I'm Boba Fett when they went to that the mod shop and got modified. That's me. <laughs> I mean. I don't want to brag or anything, that's kind of cool. You got metal Maybe that's why you. Kylo liked me so much. So in the action figure pack, this is the K-Series droid that they're talking about. It's in this little storage locker and also the pit droid that you can buy an action figure for them. And if you want to pimp out your droid even more, they have this new R-Series accessory panels. They're all metallic. Like this one is a nice rose gold. They also have a teal, a gold like a, a dark royal blue, a, a silver. So you've always been able to buy RTD2 or you could build him on the assembly line, but now you can actually get this metal Oh my god, RTD2 this, this is heavy. This is, is like, heavy? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely heavier than the plastic ones. Yeah. Wow, legit. Another new addition here at Droid Depot is you could actually build C-Series droids now. So the style of Chopper. I have been waiting for this to come out. If, if I could go back in time and build a droid again, I would probably get this one. And what color would you get it? Um, black. <laughs> <laughs> you like the black droid. I know, now I'm like for the, for, for the order, baby. You gotta like, you gotta go dark side. The only bad thing about adding new pieces to the Droid Depot building experience, it means that there's going to be it's going to be harder to find specific pieces that you want for your droid because there's only a certain amount of conveyor belt for inventory. Not only do they have new R series droids, but they also have clear BB units. So you can actually see the mechanical guts of the BB unit rolling around on the inside. You are dismissed. There are actually so many stormtroopers walking around. I was just like over there in the shade and they came up to me and they saw my <laughs> my lounge fly backpack and they were like, that's a na that's a negative. And then they were like like pointing their blasters at it like they were gonna shoot Grogu. 
That's wrong. I know. I got it on an Instagram story, so I'll, I'll put it up and you can see. But it was so funny. Yeah, but there's multiple troops of stormtroopers walking yeah. around. When is the, it's been so long since that's happened. Yeah, you only usually see two of them, but yeah. it's cool like seeing like four stormtroopers. They're all thing. around. That's a negative. <laughs> what that is? That is Dude. a birthday supporter. It's a little too late for that. That's affirmative. <laughs> Hey, hey. All species must be restrained. There are a few new drinks and even a new food item in Oga's Cantina, and I'm gonna start out with one of the drinks. This is called the Seasid Seltzer, and this is a tropical orange pineapple hard seltzer. And in case you didn't know, Seasid is an aquatic planet on the outer rim that is known for its tourism. So they probably have good seltzers there, is my guess. I'm glad we got some imported to Batu. Yep, it tastes like tastes like a seasid seltzer if I do say so myself. That's like a tongue twister. <laughs> it it tastes like a normal hard seltzer, which I personally love. I've always got the truly in stock at home. So you might say that I'm even an aficionado. And this is a good one. It's not flat, it's very flavorful, it's nice and refreshing, and I'd probably give it like a four out of five pictures. I think it's a good addition to the menu. The new snack that they have here for May is called the Five Blossom Bread. This is a warm pretzel knot with Hawaiian black sea salt served with honey mustard cream foam and Calabrian cheese sauce. And this appeared in one episode of The Clone Wars. It appeared in a book. Padme, she used to cook this. She was very good at cooking it. And I finally get to eat it. Oh, I'm jealous. I love pretzel bread. Some might say I'm a pretzel bread connoisseur. This is a good warm pretzel bread, but what's surprising is this like foamy mustard thing concoction. Very alien. This is a very solid addition to the snack menu here at Oga's. I give this like a four out of five here. Has a little bit of spice too, almost like a horseradish, like a creamy horseradish. I like it a lot. This is really good. I was kind of expecting like your basic nacho cheese, but this has got some flavor to it. It almost tastes like pimento cheese or, I don't really know, but it is really, really tasty. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this is the best cheese sauce on Disneyland property. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're it, off planet, we're not in Disneyland. You're right, sorry. The best cheese sauce in Batu. The only cheese sauce in Batu. Another new addition to the menu is the Black Squadron Lager. This is a golden lager with a touch of honey. I've tried the Gold Squadron Lager before. I wonder if this is similar. You know what? This tastes like a space Budweiser or something. <laughs> so like if you're like really craving just like a very basic, basic beer, they got you covered. And it even comes in a cool glass. So you can't complain. For a space Budweiser, it's like a four out of five. I'd, I'd you're, pound you're this back. a Budweiser a four out of five? Listen, sometimes you need a good cheap beer, okay? You, you guys agree with me, right? I couldn't be. Me neither. I'm feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no, citizen. Questions like that draw attention, citizen. You enjoy your day now. Apparently, the stormtroopers don't like the match game. I don't know why. Oh, wow. I'll get my horn in. Ah, I see we're doing some surveillance. Yes, I, I, I've been working for Lieutenant Croy. Do you know Lieutenant Croy? I have not had the pleasure. Are you yeah. transmitting to him right now? Yes. yes. Attention, Lieutenant Croy. This is Lieutenant Commander Tesk of the First Order. We appreciate your allegiance. Carry on. 
<laughs> Thank you. For the order. For the order. For the order, yes. <laughs> I've been waiting all day. Um, don't mind him. He's he's nice. Silly looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Does it have a name? Uh, yes. We call him Grogu. Say that again. Grogu. 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 I know it's a very. That strange. sounds like something I stepped on earlier. <laughs> ah, I stepped in Grogu. You said you deployed patrol units, Lieutenant. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, I did. I ask because I didn't see them. I want stormtroopers crawling this outpost until we have what we need. No one rests. Don't rest. Understood. Troopers! You will join recon unit and question anyone, everyone! And if you find that someone is supporting our enemy, you bring them to me, and I will deal with them myself! Understood! Good. Now move out! Okay, while we're over here, we're going to check out First Order Outpost. I think they might have one or two new things. So you know how they had new figures over at the Droid Depot? Well, they have new figures here at the First Order. If you open this up, the exclusive new figure here is the R5 unit from Rise of the Resistance. The only other new thing I think that's here is this First Order flag. It's a five foot by three foot. You can see it has the First Order Legion there and it says protect the galaxy. You know what? I feel like we should be hanging this in our house for the order. <laughs> And we can hang it from uh, our loft, sec or second level loft. I'm just saying. Yeah. This is a big one of those things that you could be dragging with your, your droid accessory. I should just drag it with my scooter. Think I'd get in trouble. Located at any of the beverage carts here in Galaxy's Edge, there's some new chips. These are called the Solus garlic chips and they're a mix of buffalo and white cheddar. And Solus is a planet on the western reaches of the Outer Rim and it's a barren planet filled with lava. So I'm guessing that's why they're red? Yes. Maybe they're like dipped in lava? Yes. I love the taste of lava. These are so good. Wow, they have a little bit of a kick because of that buffalo sauce. I really was not expecting that. It's like they took the garlic chips that were already there sprinkled them in the buffalo sauce and just made them even better. These are a five out of five for me. This is like the best thing I think that we've tried so far today, which is weird. Like I would not think that, but these are tasty. They're salty. They're like, I'm going to eat this whole bag. I've seen about six stormtroopers. I've seen a, a first order of lieutenant. I've seen Kyle Ren, but still no Chewbacca. going to Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities, where they have a collectible that I've been waiting for since the first trailer of Star Wars The Force Awakens. This is the Darth Vader Pyre helmet. This is the remains of Vader's helmet that Kylo Ren, the Supreme Leader, has held in his chambers. And I've been waiting for them to make a replica. There's been many companies that have promised to make replicas. I think EFX made one, and it was like two thousand dollars oh, lucasfilm geez. released one it was like six thousand dollars well how much is this one three hundred dollars still expensive not gonna say it's not expensive but a lot cheaper than the uh you know collectible alternatives you yeah. can find online it's awesome it is a lot bigger than i thought it was gonna be it is huge yeah. i mean it's life size it's one to one well, scale of course yes and uh the only question is where are we gonna put this i don't know We'll but worry about that later. <laughs> another new addition found at Doc Ondar's is this t-shirt. has a Jedi Order symbol on it. has a kind of weird collar. And this is like a performance material, kind of like Under Armour, so you could like work out with it. And not something I would normally expect in Doc Ondar's. Maybe in uh, the outfitter shop in the marketplace, but interesting. So, of course, if they have a Jedi performance shirt, they also have one for the Sith. This one looks very Darth Maul-esque. And on the back, has some sort of Sith logo. I don't actually recognize that logo. And if you're not a Sith or Jedi person, they have a long sleeve Imperial, like, performance wear for, like, the gym. Pretty nice. So, you guys know me. You know I love the Star Wars creatures. They're actually my favorite part of Star Wars. And I never thought that I could love a Sarlacc until coming into Doc Ondar's and seeing the baby Sarlacc. And now you could buy one and bring it home. 
And in case you didn't know, Han Solo and Chewbacca actually found the baby Sarlacc and gave it to Doc Ondar. If you read the Galaxy's Edge comics, it tells you about it there. And I just freaking love this. Not only because it's the baby Sarlacc, but it, it's the container and everything that you see inside of Doc Ondar's. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool when they create like things that are just related to the parks. Do you know what I mean? It's a replica of something from the park. Wait for it. It gets better. It's actually a piggy bank and you throw your coins down its mouth and it moves and it makes noise. That is incredible. How amazing is this? Even on the side, it tells you a little about it. It's from the planet of Tatooine and its diet is anything that it stumbles upon, including coins, <laughs> apparently. The Star Wars sequel trilogy has a bunch of little like MacGuffins and devices. And one of them that you might not even have recognized is the Star Compass, which you see in Last Jedi. It's on Ben Solo's desk in that flashback, but it's also in a bunch of comics. It's in this video game, Battlefront 2. This is the compass that Luke Skywalker used to find Octu, the first known Jedi temple. And they've they finally made a replica. I feel like people are laughing at me right now behind the screen. But they hadn't had a replica. No one had made a replica. They finally made a metal, I know this looks like plastic on the screen, but it's a metal replica of the Star Compass. By the way, little known fact, Star Compass, designed by Dave Filoni. There's actually a brand new costume as well. You can now find Ray's white outfit, and it's for adults and children. I kind of wish they had this before we went on the Galactic Star Cruiser. I totally would have got it. So they have a new saber here. It's the Asajj Ventress lightsaber, which might look familiar to you. It looks a lot like the Darth Maul shadow saber because it is the same saber except for as a different color kyber crystal inside as a Yeah, so this saber. one's yellow and the Darth Maul one is red. Besides that, it's literally exactly the same. Yeah, when you light it up, the yellow comes out there. And it's actually interesting because this saber was created for Asajj Ventress for the Clone Wars the last season got canceled. Ended up in the book, and then they ended up giving it to Darth Maul. So it's, Darth it's a Maul weird history. Darth Maul acquired it and bled the Kyber crystal. Oh, okay. Yeah, Maul, Typical Maul, Maul bled the Kyber crystal. Typical Maul, am I right? Yes. <laughs> so you could buy either here. If you want the Darth Maul one or the Saw Ventures, do you want to be red or do you want to be yellow? Your choice. So we're going to Docking Bay to check out the new food offerings here in the Black Spire Outpost. The new seasonal offering here at Docking Bay 7 is the Ishi Tib style pasta with braised beef bantha, and this is beef pot roast with coconut curry sauce, pasta, and mixed vegetables. And you might be wondering what's an Ishi Tib? They are the green amphibian aliens that we saw in Return of the Jedi helping Jabba the Hutt. So I guess this is a delicacy from their world. Is it that is good. Is it as good as my spicy dish that they removed from the menu? No. But that curry is so flavorful. That beef is so soft, yes, and tender. And <laughs> is it juicy though? And the noodles aren't like traditional, like cheap noodles that Disney would get. They're kind of like a fancy pasta-ish noodle. But I, I is it juicy? The beef, yeah, yeah mantha's always that's, juicy. That's true. Duh. <laughs> I'm gonna give this a five out of five Peters. Wow. I kind of hate that Cookie Tugs took away my spicy dish here, but you know what? He knows how to cook. <laughs> okay. That's that. The new dessert here at Docking Bay 7 is called the Vintian Mineral Mousse, and it's a banana brulee centered dark chocolate mousse, strawberry mousse, vanilla chantilly, chocolate crumble, and a cherry garnish. And in case you're wondering, the Vintian is a sentient species that kind of look like a rock, so it makes sense. Wait, why, if the species looks like a rock, why does their dessert, am I eating? Well, my mind, am I, am I eating them or is it just like supposed to look like them? I don't know, but they, they first appeared in the High Republic uh, novel by Claudia Gray. And I guess it's probably inspired by the Vintians. Maybe it's not like what they eat. Yeah. I don't know. There was a character named Geode, which is also like what you call a rock. Yeah, he was a navigator of a starship. Yeah, so I'm just going to imagine that I'm eating him. So should I eat one by one or mix it all together and eat it all mix at once? Mix it all together. Okay. No! Ah! 
Oh yeah, there's like a white on oh, the side. Oh wow, look at that. Yum. What is this one? Ah, oh, it's pink. You see it? Yeah. No, don't eat me. It is me, Geode. I am the Vintian. <laughs> Five out of five. Like? Five out of five. It is so good. It almost tastes like ice cream. It's not ice cream, but it almost tastes like, yeah, like Neapolitan ice cream or something. Oh, that's what it is. Neapolitan ice cream. You know the ice cream that's like yeah. vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry? I used to love that when I was a kid. That's what it is. Neapolitan ice cream. This is incredible. This, I... I hate to say it, but I think this is better than the two previous desserts that they used to have here. And well, guess what? Those don't exist. They've been erased from existing. This is amazing. Wow. You don't want any of this, right? I mean, I want to try it. Yeah, you got to try it. But um, You even rub it in the green stuff and then the brown stuff. It looks like dirt. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I got some of this. I don't know what this is, but it's delicious. Who knew that eating rocks would taste so good? I mean, I did when I used to eat like those rock candies as a kid. I'm not talking about like the crystallized rock candies. That, like, oh yes, I used to eat the other kind of rock candies too. Yeah. My dad used to like travel, and one time he went to Arizona and he brought me back like a bag of rocks, and he told me that like he found them in Arizona, and I legitimately thought that I was eating rocks like and then from the And then you started the eating them, and then you had to go to the hospital because they were actually rocks and not candy. Yep. That is so funny. I know, hilarious. So on Earth, on May 4th, we celebrate Star Wars Day. But in Black Spire Outpost on the planet of Batu, they celebrate Black Spire Day. This was first mentioned in the Traveler's Guide to Batu book. And according to this, it's a holiday celebrated at Black Spire Outpost on the planet of Batu and commemorates the founding of the outpost. Locals would decorate the outpost with colorful ribbons and tarps while celebrating with parades and feasts. And it would occasionally end with a fireworks display I'm guessing yeah. they're talking about Star Wars night when the fireworks <laughs> go over the spires. But where are our banners and ribbons? Maybe next year. I know, Black that would be so cool. Well, at least this year, we do have some merch. We have a Black Spire Day t shirt. I'm not sure what that says right there. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I'm guessing that's some kind of like numbers or something. Maybe it's the date. Oh. But on the back, Ooh. look at that. You got Droid Depot. That's the milk stand, Oga's Cantina. Can you tell me what that is? Um, the creature stall. The creature stall. Because it's a little creature. That is uh, that is um, the Toydarian toy maker. And what about this? Um, the shop that we're at right now? No, Ronto's Roasters. Ronto's Roasters and Doc Ondar's. Yeah, I like wow, this t-shirt a lot. Wow, that's really fun. Yeah. They also have other Black Spire Day t-shirts. This one's for kids, has the Millennium Falcon, and then on the back, it says Black Spire Outpost. Then if you want a woman's cut, you got Black Spire Day on the top there, and then Black Spire Outpost on the back. You already bought one mug this trip. You read my mind. I was like, why did I buy that one? I like this one too. It just says Black Spire Day, but I love like the gold reflection. And then of course, Black Spire Outpost. I have a feeling that says like 2022. You think so? Some, I don't know. My guess is it's like May 4th. Oh, maybe. Like May 4th, 2022 or something. Oh, maybe, yeah. I don't know. We usually don't talk about pins that much. These pins are super cool. They have three different pins representing different areas of the outpost. This one represents Ogas, this one's Ronto Roasters, and this one Droid Depot. And each have a secret scene inside. So Ronto's Roasters. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Turn, turn, turn. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for Oga's Cantina. Do you think it's going to be DJ Rex? Yes. Oh, yeah. Of course. That is cool. These are awesome. It makes me wonder if there's more. Like, is there one for Doc Ondar? Maybe. Oh, R2-D2. Over at the Creature Stall, one of my favorite shops here in Black Spire Outpost, they have some new merch. They have these two new kids t-shirts, cute little loaf cat, some porgs, 
and then... Oh, that? that's the creature that was supposed to be walking through Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, they made a whole book. One of our friends actually wrote a book about this character. Yeah. They're so cute. And then on the back... Oh my gosh. Disney, make this in my size. Yeah, why don't they make this for adults? Make this in my size. I will wear it every day. That is a cool shirt. And they also have some cups here. What is this for? Is this for the like... So this is... I guess it's for blue milk, right? Yeah, it has a wump on it. Yeah. And it's just a nice plastic cup. As I've been saying, all the areas have been getting their own Black Series figure sets. This one has a creature shop set. Oh my gosh. What do we got here? There's a Minoc, two Porgs, a Bogling. How cute is that? And then two of the, the Kowakian monkey lizards. They're like smaller versions of the one that you could buy that sit on your shoulder. Yeah. Love it. I just noticed something that I've never noticed before. What? So we're at the creature stall. Yeah. Are these those creatures we just ate? Geode, is that you? Geode, I ate your father earlier. I'm sorry, he was delicious. Over a cat Sockus kettle in the marketplace, the outpost mix changes seasonally here in Disneyland. Last time I think it was chocolate and banana. This time they changed it to chocolate and caramel. Oh, sounds so good. You're speaking my, my love language right now, yeah. chocolate and caramel. Oh, look at that. Oh, thing. that counts as one piece. <laughs> I already love the chocolate popcorn here, so if the caramel popcorn's good, that's gonna be a home run. Yes! <laughs> Did we even have to review it? You know that it gets a... <laughs> they've, they've never gone wrong with the Outpost Mix. Yeah. It's always good. The only disappointing thing is they replace yeah. it and then you don't get to have the old one. Yeah, I already missed the banana. The other new item here is called the Shock cheese popped grains and this is a white cheddar flavored popcorn and it's named after the animal's shock which is a herbivore that can be found on the planet of Naboo. They're a very funny looking big fat pig looking creature that you could see in the Phantom Menace. So I mean based on that description I think this is going to be good, right? Someone's screaming up there. They're like, eat it already, enough talking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it looks just like basic white cheddar popcorn. Yeah. Me. But this is a first because normally it's like all sweet flavored, so. See, I, I was assuming it was gonna taste like smart food. Mm. It's like white cheddar popcorn, right? So this tastes exactly like Pirate's Booty popcorn. I would even venture to say that like Pirate's Booty is a little bit better and cheaper. You could probably get a whole bag or two bags for the price of this. But you know what I was thinking? They should have named this Sh Shock Booty. It's like Pirate's Booty, but Shock, shock Booty. That's where they, is that funny? In my mind, I was like, God, that's gonna be so funny. But uh, yeah, I would probably skip this, honestly. Go get those chips instead. Those chips were bomb.com. So how many Kitras? Like a one, if that. Really? Yeah, it's, it's very basic. It's not that flavorful. All three sons on Batu are starting to set, and I'm getting worried that I'm not gonna get my Wookiee hug today. So we're gonna head on over to the ruins, to the west side of Black Spire Outpost. Maybe we can find it. Over in the Resistance Outpost, they have a couple new like Millennium Falcon themed shirts. I like that it's like stitched in there. They have another shirt of the Millennium Falcon speeding away from Batu. Okay, this is cute. It's a cute little sweatshirt. Of course, it has like a little pocket on the sleeve, and it has that like Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run logo that you find on the attraction. <laughs> Best in the galaxy. I like that. And lastly, we have this other Millennium Falcon shirt. That's Millennium Falcon flying high over the outpost. And I don't know why, but it says Kessel Run in 12 parsecs on the, the sleeve. I don't know, I think that's my least favorite. And I, of course, that's the adult size that I can fit into. And of course, they have that same design on a cap. So if you're a dad and you like wearing hats, 
You can wear this one. I think this might be new too. This is Black Spire Outpost and has some X-Wing helmets, some X-Wings flying around and some arabesque. I don't know what it says because I can't read it, that pesky language. But I like it has the Black Spire Outpost logo in the center as well. Oh, look at this. On the sleeve. What is this on the sleeve? Can anybody tell me what that is? Let me know in the comments. Hmm. I'm not seeing any Wookiees around here. I might have missed my chance. See any Wookiees? I haven't seen any. Your hair is a mess. I know. It's very windy today. <laughs> it's fine. You stole my popcorn. Hey, somebody's got to hold on to it. You got to film. Chewbacca not over there? No. We haven't seen him all day. I know. I mean, we, I know where Kylo is. You want to see if you can get a hug from him? He wouldn't give you a hug. I don't think he's going to give me a hug. But we could bribe him with popcorn. <laughs> Oh no! Careful. We apologize. Don't upset him, please. I want all units searching this outpost. If they are here, they will not Understood, escape. sir. Understood. Um. I'm sorry, sir. Oh no. <laughs> It's a replica. It's not your. It's not yours. Silence. <laughs> Move now. Yes, sir. Move aside now. <laughs> the stormtrooper came up to me and was like, "That went poorly." Well, you were in Doc Gondar buying the Darth Vader helmet. I actually saw Chewie and Rey, but they were way up high. What the heck? I know. <laughs> I, I was like, give me a hug. And he didn't hear me, and then he went back inside. Mm. I thought I'd let you know. I did end up seeing them. <laughs> well, I don't think I could have hugged him anyways, because I'm like, in the middle of like trying to carry this out of Disneyland. It's comical. It's really like, like funny. People are laughing at me. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What do you got on your head? Is that a Vader helmet? Very funny. <laughs> so many people are laughing at me right now. But when I get this home, who's going to be the one laughing? It's going to be me. Yep. If you haven't seen our coverage from Star Wars Night, we'll put the video right over there. We want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes... J.R. Cook, J.C. Russell, M.W., and Marlon Gutierrez. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on the next adventure. adventure.